Hello everybody. Welcome to Neet Shala. In this lecture, we are going to discuss a very important unit which is digestion and absorption from the point of view of NEET 2021 examination. So, this will be the first part of this chapter, digestion and absorption. So, let's get started with this chapter. Digestion and absorption part 1 where we are going to discuss three major topics today. The first one is about the major molecules in our food. Second is about the anatomy of the alimentary canal followed by the morphology or the histology of the alimentary canal. So let's get started with this module. First we are going to discuss about what are the various molecules which we have in our food. So this is a uh, portion which is taken from NCRT that is the introductory part of NCRT. So let us see what is there in this particular part. So every day we eat a lot of food, right? Food which is enough to provide us energy. So this food is one of the basic requirements for every single living organism. In our food, mainly we have carbohydrates. Also, we have proteins as well as fats. And these three are the major components of our diet. And hence we can call them as the macromolecules because their weight is very large. On the other hand, vitamins and minerals they are also required for us but they are required in smaller quantities hence they are micronutrients so there are two categories of nutrients the first one is known as macronutrient so i'll write over here first one is known as macronutrient jahan pe hamara carbohydrates aata hai proteins aata hai aur fats bhi aata hai and talking about the micronutrients we have vitamin and minerals these are the micronutrients and macronutrients uska weight zyada hai uska molecular mass zyada hota hai aur micronutrients ka jo molecular mass hai wo zyada kam hai so here food provides us energy that is the first function of eating food and the second thing, it also provides organic materials. Now, what is the use of these organic materials? These organic materials can be used for two purposes. One is for the growth and another is for the repair of tissues. Our tissues har same damage hota hai because of the effects of the environment. So, is tissues ko repair karne ke liye energy chahiye aur organic materials bhi chahiye. Those organic materials are coming from the food that we eat also along with food we drink a lot of water right nearly eight glass of water we are drinking minimum a day so the water we take that also plays a very important role in our body number one it plays a very important role in the metabolic processes and number two it prevents dehydration of the body so it prevents the dehydration of the body and also it acts as a catalyst in various metabolic processes in our body but these bio macro molecules which is also known as the macronutrients they cannot be utilized by your body in their original form that is carbohydrates cannot be taken up by the cell as carbohydrate similarly proteins cannot be taken by your cells as protein so that means they have to be broken down and they have to be converted into simple substances in the digestive system so the process of the conversion of these complex food substances into simple absorbable forms is called as digestion so what is digestion digestion is the process of conversion of complex food substances to simple absorbable forms and the process of digestion is carried out with the help of our digestive system which consists of the alimentary canal as well as certain digestive glands and it includes mechanical processes as well as certain biochemical processes so in this chapter we are going to investigate what are the various mechanical processes and what are the various biochemical processes by which the complex macronutrients are converted into simple absorbable forms so let's get started with the anatomy of human digestive system human digestive system consists of two components the first one is known as the alimentary canal which is also known as the gut it is also known as the gut and the second one is the associated glands which is the digestive glands now the alimentary canal is a long tube starting from the mouth 
and ends in the anus and it is 7 meters long. It's a very long tube that starts from the mouth and ends in the anus. In humans, the first form was the anus and then came the mouth. So let us investigate further about the structure of the alimentary canal. We are going to study about the anatomy of alimentary canal. So let's get started. Here you can see a picture, a gif over here. This is a picture of a mouth. So here if you look at the mouth which is also known as the buccal cavity or the oral cavity, it consists of mainly two things. The first one you can see over here is the tooth. Individual member is called as the tooth and the plural is known as the teeth. In addition to that you can also see a muscular organ which is known as the tongue. Now the roof and the floor that is also important. So what is there in the roof of the buccal cavity? In the roof of the buccal cavity you have the palate. Now if you are just putting your tongue in the palate you can see that the palate have a rough surface which is known as the hard palate and the back side of your mouth is having the soft palate. So palate is of two types hard palate and soft palate. So this is present in the root of the buccal cavity. Now what is present in the base? In the base you have certain glands and also you have frenulum. Now this frenulum attaches the tongue with the floor of the buccal cavity. So let us study about each of these in detail. First we are going to study about the structure of tooth. So the first term when we talk about teeth or tooth is the dentition. Now what do you mean by dentition? Dentition is the arrangement of the tooth in the buccal cavity. So it is the arrangement of the tooth in the buccal cavity and there are different types of dentition which is seen in different groups of organisms. Bahut sare organisms hai is dharti par aur ye sare organisms apne apne tarah ke dentition dikhate hai. That means they show different types of dentition. In humans mainly we can see three types of dentition. The first one is known as heterodont dentition. Second is known as thicodont dentition and the third one is known as diphyodont dentition. So once again, there are three types of human dentition. The first one is known as the heterodont dentition. The second one is known as the thicodont dentition. And the third one is known as the diphyodont dentition. So let us study what does each of these types of dentition mean. So let us start with the first one. First one is the thicodont dentition. Now what is the meaning of thicodont dentition? Now thicodont, I can divide this word into two. The first one is known as thica and the second one is don't. So thica, what is this thica? The socket of the jawbone where each tooth is embedded is known as the thica. So the tooth is embedded in a socket of jawbone and this socket that you can see over here or over here is known as the thica. So this type of attachment jaha ek teeth sockets mein bhara hua hai usko hum bolenge thicodont dentition so thicodont dentition means each tooth is embedded in a socket of jawbone which is also known as thica now the second type of dentition is known as diphyodont dentition now what do you mean by diphyodont dentition we know that we are mammals like us majority of the mammals including human beings forms two sets of teeth diphyo means two so we have two sets of teeth during our lifetime first one is the set of the temporary teeth which is also known as the deciduous teeth which we have in our childhood and when we become adults it is replaced by a set of permanent teeth which is also known as the adult teeth so in our lifetime we acquire two different types of teeth. The first one is known as the deciduous teeth which is also known as the temporary or the milk teeth and the second one is known as the permanent teeth which is also known as the adult teeth. So this particular type of dentition of having two different sets of teeth during the lifetime 
is known as diffeodont dentition. So here you can see at the age of 6 we are having the milk teeth over here which is just 20 in number and when we become adult there are 32 teeth right there are 32 tooth that is the adult teeth so this is the milk teeth and this is the adult teeth let us move forward to the third type of dentition which is known as the heterodont dentition now if you take an adult human tooth we can see that there are 32 permanent teeth and these 32 permanent teeth are of four different types so this particular phenomena or this particular type of dentition where there are four or more than one type of teeth which is present in our mouth is known as heterodont dentition hetero meaning different so different types of teeth are present in our mouth hence the dentition is known as heterodont dentition now what are the four different types of teeth which is present in our mouth the first one is known as incisors second is known as canines third is known as premolars and the last is known as molars so there are four different types of teeth which is present in humans so this type of dentition is known as heterodont dentition if it was homodont dentition all the types of teeth look similar but if it is heterodont dentition at least there will be two different types of teeth or even more types like in the case of humans so let us now talk about the concept of dental formula so we have seen that our mouth consists of 32 teeth and these 32 teeth are of four different types now what is the arrangement of these teeth what is the number of different types of teeth which is present in our buccal cavity so let us investigate that for that what am I going to do is I am going to divide the buccal cavity into two halves so I'm going to cut the buccal cavity like this so when I'm cutting the buccal cavity like this on this side I will be having 16 teeth so here I have I will have 16 teeth and here also I will be having 16 teeth so if you count the number of incisors canines premolars and molars in this half divided by incisors canines premolars and molars in this half that is the lower jaw we will be getting the dental formula so when we count that we can see that the number of incisors is 2 number of canines in this side is 1 number of premolars in this side is 2 and the number of molars in this side is 3 so in the upper side we are having 2 1 2 3 and in the lower side we are again having 2 1 2 3 now please do note that this is not a fraction we cannot cut 2 1 2 3 by 2 1 2 3 and place it as 1 we are just representing the number of incisors canines premolars and molars in one half of the upper side and one half of the lower side that's it so here we are getting 2 1 2 3 divided by 2 1 2 3 and if you multiply 4 with any of these numbers we will get the total number of that particular teeth so now you can easily find out what is the number of incisors canines premolars and molars so let me write down the total numbers here we have 2 1 2 3 in the upper jaw so if I multiply this 2 with 4 I will be getting 2 into 4 that is coming out to be 8 so I'll write here 8 so that is the number of incisors now we have canines for getting canines we have to multiply this 1 with 4 so we will get a 4 over here that is the number of canines now this 2 into 4 will give us 8 that is the number of premolars and this 3 into 4 will give us 12 and that is the number of molars so now we have found out what is the number of different types of teeth which are present in our mouth now among this 12 molars the last four molars occurs only after 18 years of age that is why the last four are known as the wisdom teeth or the wisdom tooth so that is the basic concepts regarding human dentition now let us move forward before we move forward to tongue let us understand one more term related to teeth as per NCRT that is the concept of enamel so if you take a cross section of the tooth you can see that the outermost layer of the tooth is made up of enamel and this enamel is the hard 
chewing surface of the teeth. And what is the purpose of this enamel? Enamel helps in mastication of food. Mastication ka matlab hai chewing. Chewing or the grinding of food is done with the help of enamel. If you look at the inner side, that is the second layer, that is going to be made up of cementum. So we have two types of substances present in our teeth. First one is known as enamel and the second one is known as cementum. Now let us move forward to the second organ which is present in the buccal cavity which is the tongue. Now what is a tongue? Tongue is a freely movable muscular organ and that is attached to the floor of the buccal cavity. Ye hai aapka floor of the buccal cavity. So is floor say tongue attached to a hair by means of a muscular uh, by means of a connective tissue. It's a connective tissue sheath. Us connective tissue sheath ko hum bolenge frenulum. So frenulum is a connective tissue sheath which connects the tongue with the floor of the buccal cavity. Ab tongue ki upper surface that is in the upper surface you can see small small projections. Ye bhi projections hai. Ye chota chota things bhi projections hai. Ye projections ko hum bolenge papilla. So we have projections which are present on the surface of the tongue. These projections are known as papilla and some of these papillae bear taste buds. Not all but some bear taste buds. So at your level you just have to understand this term that the projections which is present on the surface of the tongue is known as papilla and some of the papilla bear taste buds. Do note that all the papilla does not bear taste buds. Let us move forward to the next part. So from the oral cavity we are moving on to the second part of the digestive system which is the pharynx. So oral cavity leads to a short pharynx. Now this pharynx is going to be a common passage. This is the nasal cavity. So nasal cavity say air aata hai and this air is going to come over here. This is the food cavity or the oral cavity jaham se food bhi aata hai. So we can I say that it is a common passage for food and air. So here you can see that it is now going to open into the esophagus or it can open into the trachea. So it have to be very careful because food should not enter the respiratory tract. Right. So to prevent that there is a cartilaginous flap. You can see a cartilaginous flap over here. So I will rub everything else. So I will rub all these things here and I will just highlight on this flap. You can see a flap like structure. This muscular flap like structure cartilaginous. It's a cartilaginous flap like structure. So this cartilaginous flap like structure which prevents the entry of the food into the glottis that is into the respiratory tract is known as the epiglottis. So epiglottis plays a very very crucial role. What is the crucial role? The crucial role is that it does not permit the entry of food into the respiratory tract. So it will close during swallowing as a result of which the food does not enter into the respiratory tract. So when we are talking what happens the epiglottis is open but when we are chewing the food the epiglottis is closed and the action and the mechanism of the closing and opening of epiglottis is under neural control. Talking about the next part of the uh, alimentary canal which is known as the esophagus. Now what is esophagus? So whenever you hear esophagus the first point that is coming to your mind is that it is a very thin, it is a long tube and it extends through the neck, through the thorax and through the diaphragm. That is it is going to pierce the diaphragm and it is going to meet the stomach. So here you can see it is going to pierce the diaphragm and then it is going to enter into the stomach. So it can be divided into three parts. A cervical part which is the portion in your neck region. Thoracic part which is near your chest region. And you also have an abdominal part which is near your abdomen. That is where it is piercing through the diaphragm. Now talking about stomach. Stomach is a J shaped bag like structure. Now there are certain sphincters. Now sphincters are basically muscles that regulates the closing and opening of substances. So you have two sphincters associated with stomach. One is present over here that is permitting the entry of food from the esophagus to the stomach. 
So since it is present at the junction between esophagus and stomach, it is known as the gastroesophageal sphincter, which is known as the GOS, gastroesophageal sphincter, which regulates the opening of the esophagus into the mouth. Similarly, here you can see the next portion is known as the duodenum, which is the first part of the small intestine. So the pyloric region of the stomach is opening into the duodenum. So here we have a sphincter which is known as the pyloric sphincter. So these two sphincters are important. One is the pyloric sphincter which guides the entry of food from the stomach to the small intestine. And another is the gastroesophageal sphincter which guides the entry of food from the esophagus into the stomach. Now if you look at the sections of the stomach you can see that there are four different parts of the stomach. The first portion is known as the cardiac portion into which the esophagus open. So now this portion should be very very clear. So I'll just make this diagram a little bit neat. And now here you can see that the esophagus is opening into the second region of the stomach which is known as the cardiac region. It is not going to extend into the, it is not going to move into the fundic region. Once it reaches the cardiac region there are HCL which is present in the stomach. There is churning moment of the food which is happening inside the stomach and as a result of which it starts moving in a zigzag manner. So only at that particular time the food can reach the fundus region. So the second region is the fundus region which is the extended part of the stomach and the third is the main portion which is the body or the central region. This region is known as the body and the last portion is known as the pyloric region which opens into the first part of the small intestine. Very very easy points related to stomach. Once again, it's a J-shaped bag-like structure. There are two sphincters associated with stomach. One is the gastroesophageal sphincter and another is a pyloric sphincter. Now, regions of the stomach, there are four regions. Cardiac region, fundic region, body or the central region and the last one is the pyloric region. So once we understand the structure of stomach, let us move on to small intestine. Small intestine mein teen parts hai. Pahela hai duodenum, second hai jejunum, and the third is the ileum. Now, first one is the duodenum. You can see over here, this is the duodenum, the shortest part of the small intestine. Now, small intestine is the largest, matlab, longest part of the complete alimentary canal. The longest part is the small intestine. So here, you can see that it is divided into three regions. First region is the duodenum, this shape hai C. Second portion aapko dekh sakte hai jejunum. Jejunum is long and it is coiled. Third portion is known as ileum. Ileum is highly coiled. Ab ileum is going to open into the next region which is known as the large intestine. So I'll show you a picture of large intestine here. So ileum is going to open like this. I'll show over here. Ileum is going to open like this into the large intestine. Now large intestine consists of three regions again. Cecum, colon and rectum. The first region which you can see over here is known as the cecum. Now cecum is a very important portion because it is having life. It is having organisms with life. Now what are those organisms which are present in cecum with life? They are the symbiotic microorganisms. Usually we will think that microorganisms which is present in our gut are not useful. But that is a wrong notion. There are some organisms which are useful, which carries out the process of digestion of certain substances and even absorption of certain substances. So these are known as the symbiotic microorganisms or we can give it another name, micro. Sorry, they are also known as gut flora. So I'll write over here. They are also known as gut flora so gut flora is present over here in the cecum region and it is a small blind sac sac like structure jo visible nahi hai utni visible nahi hai isli usko blind sac bola hai now here you can see a small finger like projection so i will just zoom in i think i'm unable to zoom this picture yeah here you can see a very small structure you can see over here a very small finger like structure over here this small finger like structure is known as the vermiform appendix vermiform appendix aaj ke human mein 
कोई भी रोल नहीं करता है उसको कोई भी रोल नहीं है इसलिए उसको हमने एक वेस्टिजियल ऑर्गेन बोला है बट इट्स इन्फ्लमेशन इज एक्सट्रीमली पेनफुल एंड सर्जरी इज द ओनली क्योर टू रिमूव इट्स इन्फ्लमेशन सो इससे कोई भी यूज नहीं है लेकिन हार्म भी है and that is arising from the cecum now cecum is going to open into the next region which is known as the colon now colon is the long part you can see over here it consists of four different regions this is known as the ascending region aisa ascending next is a transverse region next is the descending region and then there is another region like this which is known as the sigmoid region ye wala region this is known as the sigmoid colon now these are the four different parts of the colon and this portion is going to open now into the rectum now rectum is going to be the temporary storehouse of the feces and rectum opens into the last part of the alimentary canal which is known as the anus so this was all about the structure or the anatomy of the male sorry uh, about the alimentary canal now let us talk about histology of alimentary canal that is the tissues which are present the tissue layers which are present in our alimentary canal so if you take a circular cross section of our alimentary canal it looks something like this it consists of four different layers of cells the outermost layer is known as the serosa the outermost layer is known as the serosa you can see this this epithelial layer along with some connective tissue which is known as the serosa in and to that you have the muscularis which is the muscular layer next you have little bit mucus so it is known as submucosa but little more amount of mucus is present in mucosa so you have four different layers serosa muscularis submucosa and mucosa these are the four different layers which are present in our alimentary canal the four different layers of tissue which are present in the alimentary canal once again serosa muscularis submucosa and mucosa so let us now see the general organization of the gastrointestinal tract the outermost layer is known as the sero sorry uh, serosa serosa is also known as the adventitia next layer this is the first layer the outermost layer second layer is known as the muscularis now muscularis consists of two regions one is known as the circular muscle and the second is known as the longitudinal muscle now between the circular muscle and the longitudinal muscle you can see a plexus a nerve complex and the name of that plexus is important it is known as the orbash plexus which is also known as the myentric plexus now in the submucosa that is the third layer it again consists of a nerve complex or the plexus and that particular plexus is known as the submucosal plexus also known as the meesner's plexus and the last layer is known as the mucosa which is the innermost layer and it consists of epithelium lamina propria and muscularis mucosa so these are the different layers in our gastrointestinal tract if we take a circular cross section through the complete tube we will be able to see these four layers of tissues and these are the different nerve complexes or the plexus which are present one is the orbash plexus which is present in the muscularis layer and meesner's plexus which is present in the submucosal layer so this is the picture from ncrt so this picture is very very important outermost layer it is marked here it is serosa next is the muscularis muscularis ka inner layer aap dekh sakte hai yaha hum ka inner layer this is the inner layer inner layer is circular outer layer usko just sirf ek uh, labeling ke liye ek picture diya hua hai that is outer longitudinal layer hai so you can study it as icol it's a code inner circular outer longitudinal next is the submucosa this layer and then comes the mucosa mucosa ke bhi andar kya hota hai lumen hota hai this is the lumen so these are the different layers of alimentary canal so let us study about each of these layers in detail serosa is the outermost layer usme kya kya hote hai first is the thin mesothelium mesothelium is the epithelium of the visceral organs and also it consists of some connective tissue so not much importance next is the muscularis layer muscularis kisse bana hua hai smooth muscle se bana hua hai and that is arranged into two regions inner circular muscles and an outer longitudinal muscle so you can use the code icol and 
स्टमक में जब आप एक्सरसाइज uh, करते हो तो एप्स की वर्कआउट करते हैं ना तो दिस एप्स की वर्कआउट करते समय ये ओब्लिक मसल लेयर की वर्कआउट करते हैं तो स्टमक में और कुछ पार्ट्स में ओब्लिक मसल लेयर भी होते हैं वन टू थ्री थ्री लेयर्स की मसल होती है दिस इज द इनर लेयर इनर लेयर क्या है इनर सर्कुलर लेयर आउटर लेयर क्या है आउटर लॉन्जिट्यूडल लेयर इन दोनों लेयर के बीच में एक और लेयर प्रेजेंट होता है इन द स्टमक एंड दैट लेयर इज नॉन एज दब्लिक मसल लेयर व्हिच इज प्रेजेंट इन सम रीजंस। सो नाउ लेट अस टॉक अबाउट द थर्ड लेयर दैट इज नॉन एज दब म्यूकोसल लेयर अब सब म्यूकोसा क्या क्या से बना हुआ है फर्स्ट वन इज द लूज कनेक्टिव टिश्यू एंड इट ऑल्सो कंसिस्ट ऑफ नर्स ब्लड वेसल्स and lymph vessels uske sath hi duodenum mein first part of the small intestine that is duodenum wahan pe aapko glands bhi dekh sakte hai which is known as the bruner's gland bruner's gland so bruner's gland hote hai jisko submucosal glands bhi bolta hai so these are present in the submucosa of duodenum so that is an important point इससे क्वेश्चंस आ सकता है फर्स्ट पॉइंट इज नॉट सो इंपॉर्टेंट बट दिस पॉइंट इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट प्लीज टेक ए नॉट ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फ्रॉम एग्जामिनेशन पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू इन डिओडिनम ग्लैंड्स आर आल्सो प्रेजेंट इन द सब म्यूकोसा व्हिच इज नोन एज द ब्रूनर्स ग्लैंड नाउ टॉकिंग अबाउट म्यूकोसा व्हिच इज द इनर मोस्ट लेयर एंड नेक्स्ट पॉइंट इज इट कंसिस्ट ऑफ इररेगुलर फोल्ड्स सो द इररेगुलर फोल्ड्स दैट इज फॉर्मड बाय द म्यूकोसा इन द स्टमक in the stomach it is known as the rugae and in intestine it is known as the villi so these two projections are important these two irregular folds or finger like projections are important in stomach it is known as rugae and in small intestine it is known as villi now mucosa can also be present it can also forms glands in stomach so this point should be very very clear intestine mein kon glands banate hai aur stomach mein कॉन ग्लैंड्स बनाते हैं इन स्टमक म्यूकोसा फॉर्म्स ग्लैंड्स व्हिच इज नॉन एज द गैस्ट्रिक ग्लैंड्स एंड इन इंडस्टाइन बोथ सब म्यूकोसल ग्लैंड्स भी होता है और म्यूकोसल ग्लैंड्स भी होता है सब म्यूसल सब म्यूकोसल ग्लैंड्स आर आल्सो नोन एज ब्रोनर्स ग्लैंड एंड हियर इन बिटवीन द क्रिप्स दैट इज क्रिप्स व्हिच इज प्रेजेंट इफ दिस इज द विलाई देन दीस कैविटीज आर नोन एज द क्रिप्स सो इस क्रिप्स में क्रिप्स ऑफ लीबर कुन भी बोलता है यहाँ पे कुछ ग्लैंड्स होते हैं एंड दैट इज अ म्यूकोसल मॉडिफिकेशन सो इंडस्टाइन कंसिस्ट ऑफ सब म्यूकोसल ग्लैंड एज वेल एज म्यूकोसल ग्लैंड वेर एज स्टमक कंसिस्ट ऑफ म्यूकोसल ग्लैंड ओनली सो हियर यू कैन सी द पिक्चर ऑफ रूगे एंड विलाई दीज इन फोल्डिंग्स आर नॉन एज रूगे एंड दीज फिंगर लाइक प्रोजेक्शन जो आप यहाँ पे देख सकते हैं दे आर नॉन एज द विलाई रूगे कहाँ पे देख सकते हैं रूगे आपको देख सकते हैं आपकी स्टमक में स्टमक इज जे शेप्ड बैग लाइक मस्कुलर स्ट्रक्चर एंड विलय आपको देख सकते हैं आपकी इंडस्टाइन में एंड व्हाट इज द फंक्शन ऑफ विलय विलय इंक्रीजेस द सरफेस एरिया फॉर एब्सॉर्प्शन सो दिस इज द पिक्चर ऑफ विलय आपको देख सकते हैं इट हेल्प्स इन एब्सॉर्प्शन सो दिस इज द पिक्चर ऑफ विलय आपकी एनसीआरटी में भी ऐसा एक पिक्चर है आपको देख सकते हैं इन द क्रिप्स यू हैव वेरी वेल डेवलप्ड वास्कुलर टिश्यू विच कंसिस्ट ऑफ वेन्स आर्टरीज एंड लिम्फ फेसल्स एमंग द लिम्फ फेसल्स देर इज वन लार्ज लिम्फ फेसल विच इज नोन एज लैक्टियल सो लैक्टियल इज अ वेरी लार्ज लिम्फ फेसल विच इज प्रेजेंट इन द विलाई एंड द मेन फंक्शन ऑफ दिस लैक्टील इज टू एब्सॉर्ब फैट और एब्सॉर्ब लिपिड दिस इज द मेजर फंक्शन ऑफ lactile so that is very important lactile is very very important in addition to the normal vascular tissue there is one large lymph vessel which is known as lactile which help in the absorption of lipid molecules and these finger like projections jo yahan pe aap dekh sakte hai they are known as villi talking about the last topic of today's discussion which is digestive glands hamari digestive system mein panch glands hote hain liver gastric gland इंडस्टाइनल ग्लैंड पैनक्रियास एंड सलाइवरी ग्लैंड सो लेट एस सी ईच ऑफ दीज इन डिटेल 
starting with the first one which is the salivary gland so this completely explains the location of the various glands so let us read the text first and then we will come back to this diagram to understand this better so as you know that salivary glands produces saliva and this saliva is produced by three pairs of salivary glands the first one is known as the parotid parotid is present near the cheek region second is known as the submaxillary or the submandibular gland mandible means the lower jaw so submandibular is present near the lower jaw and we have the sublingual gland lingual means tongue so sublingual means it is present below the tongue so teen tarah ke salivary glands hote hai first one is known as parotid which is present near the cheek region second is the submaxillary which is also known as the submandibular gland which is present near the lower jaw and the third one is known as the sublingual gland which is present below the tongue now these glands are exocrine glands matlab isme hum ducts hote hain agar ye ek gland hai to is gland mein saliva produce hote hain right and all these glands are produced outside the buccal cavity ye teenom gland buccal cavity mein nahi hai they are present आउटसाइड द बकल कैविटी लेकिन उसको बकल कैविटी की ओर दिस इज द बकल कैविटी दिस इज द बकल कैविटी एंड दिस इज आउटसाइड द बकल कैविटी सो फ्रॉम द ग्लैंड देर इज अ ट्यूबुलर कनेक्शन देर इज अ ट्यूब विच इज एक्सटेंडिंग टिल द बकल कैविटी सो द सेक्रीशन आर पोर्ड इन टू द बकल कैविटी सो दैट इज अ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट दीज ग्लैंड आर सिचुएटेड जस्ट आउटसाइड द बकल कैविटी एंड दे सेक्रीट द सलाइवरी जूस इन टू द बकल कैविटी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट point so now let us come back to the diagram so this was the diagram here you can see parotid gland which is present in the cheek region second submandibular gland which is present below the lower jaw and the sublingual gland which is present below the tongue so once we understand the structure of the salivary gland let us now move forward to the second gland which is known as the liver now liver is very very important because it is the largest gland in the human body this ka weight hai 1.2 to 1.5 kg and it is present in the abdominal cavity just below the diaphragm yahan pe aapka diaphragm hai just uske niche aapko dekh sakte hai aapka liver liver mein do lobes hote hai and what is the functional unit of liver structural and functional unit of the liver is the hepatic lobules hepatic lobules hai these are known as the hepatic lobules now lobule ka ek magnified picture diya hua hai you can see they look like cords right they consist of hepatic cells this is the hepatic lobule in the hepatic lobule you can see hepatic cells and these hepatic cells are arranged in the form of cords so this is a very very important point liver mein hepatic lobules hote hai that is the structural and the functional unit of liver and if you take an individual hepatic lobule you can see the hepatic cells they are arranged in the form of cords so now let us talk about the next gland but before that we have some ducts and uh, the duct system which is associated with liver so i will explain that in a little bit of detail so let me take a blank slide over here i am just going to take a example or a flow chart to understand this we have two factories one is the liver so i'll take over here liver and another is the pancreas so factories are the place where something is made some product is manufactured right so sometimes certain factories can have a go down for storing their product this liver is having a go down which is the gall bladder pancreas does not have any such thing for liver and pancreas there is only one common market which is the duodenum that is the first part of the small intestine now from the liver a vehicle is coming through a road now the name of the road is known as hepatic duct so this is known as the hepatic duct pancreas se bhi ek road hai pancreas se bhi ek duct release hota hai jiska naam hai pancreatic duct pancreatic 
duct. Now, this liver is going to release its secretion and it is going to be stored temporarily in the gallbladder. Ab gallbladder se bhi ek duct release hota hai. Us gallbladder ki is duct ko hum bolenge cystic duct. Cystic duct. Ab yahaan pe aap dekh sakte hai. Hepatic duct aur cystic duct dono milakar ek duct ho gaya hai. Is duct ko hum bolenge in dono se liver ka hi secretion aata hai. Right. Liver is secreting bile. This is important. Liver ka secretion ko hum bolenge bile. और वो बाइल ही गोल ब्लैडर में भी स्टोर होता है तो इस पाथ में और इस पाथ में बाइल ही आता है अब ये दोनों कंबाइन करके ये जो पार्ट है वहां भी बाइल ही आता है इसलिए इसको हम बोलेंगे कॉमन बाइल डक्ट नाउ दिस कॉमन बाइल डक्ट इज गोइंग टू कंबाइन विद द पैनक्रियाटिक डक्ट इन दोनों को मिलाकर एक कॉमन डक्ट बनाता है पैनक्रियाटिक डक्ट कॉमन बाइल डक्ट ये दोनों को मिलाकर एक कॉमन डक्ट बनाया हुआ है दिस कॉमन डक्ट इज नॉन एज दी हेपैटो पैनक्रियाटिक डक्ट हेपैटो पैनक्रियाटिक डक्ट व्हिच इज गोइंग टू ओपन इनटू द डियोडिनम एंड इन दिस ओपनिंग देयर इज अ स्पिंचर व्हिच इज प्रेजेंट और वी कैन कॉल इट एज अ मसल मस्कुलेचर और अ स्पिंचर दैट इज नोन एज द स्पिंचर ऑफ ओडाई सो बहुत सारे टर्म्स है इसमें so make sure that you draw this diagram very carefully and study this diagram very carefully this is the most simplified diagram for your biliary system or this complete transport of bile and the pancreatic juice so once again liver is released into the hepatic duct it is stored in the gallbladder duct of the gallbladder is known as the cystic duct hepatic duct and cystic duct combine to form common bile duct पैनक्रियास का डक्ट को हम बोलेंगे पैनक्रियाटिक डक्ट पैनक्रियाटिक डक्ट कंबाइंस विद अ कॉमन बाइल डक्ट टू फॉर्म हेपैटो पैनक्रियाटिक डक्ट नाउ द ओपनिंग ऑफ द हेपैटो पैनक्रियाटिक डक्ट इज गार्डेड बाय स्पिंक्चर ऑफ ओडाई एंड इट इज गोइंग टू ओपन इनटू द डियोडिनम सो नाउ लेट मी टेक अप द स्लाइड बैक दिस इज द पिक्चर व्हिच यू हैव इन एनसीईआरटी अ सिमिलर काइंड ऑफ पिक्चर यू हैव ओवर देयर आल्सो सो हियर यू कैन सी the ducts but before that one more point i have to take over here that is regarding glissonis capsule maine bola ki liver ko do lobules hote hai this complete lobules are covered by a thin connective tissue sheath and this thin connective tissue sheath which is covering the surface of the liver is known as the glissonis capsule so yahan pe covering hota hai us covering ko hum bolenge glissonis capsule now the bile which is secreted by the hepatic cells it is now going to pass through the hepatic duct and is stored and concentrated in the thin muscular sac which is called as the gall bladder ducts of the gall bladder that is the cystic duct along with the hepatopantry sorry hepatic duct forms the common bile duct jo aapne dekha dekha tha these two are going to combine to form the common bile duct common bile duct is going to open into the pancreas sorry uh, into the duodenum now this pancreas is going to open over here this is known as the hepato pancreatic duct so over here this is the picture exact picture from ncrt to help your study easier you can see over here this is the liver yahan pe liver hota hai to liver se hepatic duct this is known as the hepatic duct and this is known as the cystic duct now these two have combined to form common bile duct this is the pancreatic duct these two are now going to combine to form the hepato pancreatic duct hepato pancreatic duct is going to open into the duodenum and it is guarded by a sphincter which is known as the sphincter of odai let us now talk about pancreas now pancreas is an exocrine as well as an endocrine gland hence it is known as a mixocrine or a compound gland now compound gland means it consists of both exocrine secretions as well as endocrine secretions and its location is between the limbs of the u shaped duodenum or the c shaped duodenum in new textbook it is given as c shaped duodenum so you can follow the same c shaped duodenum now exocrine portion as you can see over here this is the exocrine portion it is going to secrete alkaline pancreatic juice because from the stomach whichever chyme or the digested food that is coming out that is highly acidic 
so that acidic nature of the food have to be converted into an alkaline form so for that the pancreatic juice is alkaline and it consists of enzymes and the endocrine portion it is going to secrete hormones the two main hormones are glucagon and insulin in addition to that it also releases two other hormones somatostatin and pancreatic polypeptide so four different hormones are released by the endocrine part of the pancreas that is known as the I'll write over here in a blank slide the name of the endocrine portion is known as islets of Langerhans islets of Langerhans which is the endocrine portion and the exocrine portion is known as pancreatic acini pancreatic acini is known as the exocrine portion exocrine glands are the ductless glands sorry ducted glands and endocrine glands are the duct less glands so the exocrine glands they are responsible for the formation of pancreatic juice pancreatic juice is highly alkaline and it consists of various enzymes like amylases lipases and so on so let us study about these enzymes and all in the process of physiology now let us talk about the next gland which is two minor glands which is present one is the gastric gland and another is the intestinal gland so the mucosa of the stomach we have studied earlier that it consists of gastric glands gastric glands may basically three types of cells hote hai lekin kuch text to five six ye bhi bolta hai but according to ncrt there are three main types of cells ye teeno mein important hai mucosa next cell that secretes mucus parietal cell which is also known as the oxyndic cells iska do secretions hote hai one is the hcl which provides the acidic medium to the chyme and another one is the castles intrinsic factor which is a factor which is responsible for the absorption of vitamin b12 so now make this point very clear hcl is very important for the conversion of fe2 plus to fe3 plus and this fe3 plus is responsible for the formation of rbcs so can i say that the parietal cells is having an indirect role in erythropoiesis so that is one very important question which cells which gastric cells is having a role in erythropoiesis answer is parietal or oxyndic cells now if this hcl is not produced matlab if the parietal cells are damaged then hcl is not produced so in that particular case the conversion of fe2 plus to fe3 plus cannot happen in that particular case there is a type of anemia which is occurring which is known as iron deficiency anemia iron deficiency anemia occurs if parietal cells are absent if hcl is not produced that condition is known as achlorhydria because hydrochloric acid is not produced and i have also said one more term here that is the intrinsic factor so here intrinsic factor is responsible for the absorption of vitamin b12 so if castles intrinsic factor is absent then what happened vitamin b12 which is also known as cyanocoblamine because it consists of cobalt this will not be absorbed in our body and if it is not absorbed in our body then what happens a very very important question can come from here it results in a disease which is known as pernicious anemia pernicious anemia so we have studied two different types of anemia which occurs due to the deficiency or any problems with the parietal cell one is known as the iron deficiency anemia and the second one is pernicious anemia parietal cells are also responsible for erythropoiesis indirect role in erythropoiesis yes sub need ka questions tha so this is very very important section and the next cell that we have studied is the 
mucosa and egg cell which secretes mucus and the last one is the chief cell which is also known as the peptic cells and it is going to secrete pepsinogen now it does not secrete pepsin please take a note it does not secrete pepsin it is going to secrete the enzyme in its inactive form that is pepsinogen and also it secretes a little bit of amount of lipase as well now this pepsinogen is converted into pepsin by the action of hydrochloric acid so that is a very very important point so here you have a summary of the gastric glands these three are important from examination point of view goblet cells secretes mucus that protects the stomach lining from the rupturing or the corrosion or the excoriation of the acid attack parietal cells secrete the gastric acid which is a hydrochloric acid and castles intrinsic factor now the chief cells that is going to secrete pepsinogen which is a protease precursor now let us talk about the intestinal glands which is the last type of glands which is present in the human alimentary canal now the intestinal mucosal epithelium that consists of goblet cells and these goblet cells is going to secrete the mucus now also there are certain brush border cells aisa kuch brush border cells bhi hai these brush border cells they along with the secretions of these goblet cells they are going to form the intestinal juice jisko hum succus endericus bhi bolta hai so this is very important intestinal juice is also known as succus endericus now succus endericus consists of a variety of enzymes such as disaccharidases example maltase then you can say sucrase etc and also it consists of dipeptidases lipases and nucleosidases nucleotidases etc food ko sabse chota tukda banna that is the main function of intestinal juice the smallest components of every food particles is done the breakdown of every food particles into its most smallest or most simplest form is done by the intestinal juice and now next important point is the mucus along with the bicarbonates from the pancreas that is going to protect the intestinal mucosa from the acid as well as it provides an alkaline medium for the enzymatic activity and what is the ph in the intestine the ph of the intestine is 7.8 that is alkaline medium and that is made by the intestinal gland or the intestinal juice now another gland we have studied submucosal gland which is also known as the bruner's gland help in this particular process so let us now see this uh, composition of succus endericus mainly it consists of water and certain solids are also present solids are of two types organic substances and inorganic substances organic substances mainly consist of enzymes enzymes includes proteolytic enzymes which is the protein splitting enzymes like the peptidases amino peptidase dipeptidase tripeptidase and so on and also there is enterokinase amylolytic enzymes like the sucrase maltase lactase dextrinase etc lipolytic enzymes such as lipase we will study the function of all these in detail in the next slide that is in the next uh, lecture other organic substance includes mucus intrinsic factor and certain difference in proteins and inorganic substance includes sodium calcium potassium bicarbonate chloride phosphate and sulfate most important one is the enzymes which are present what are the proteolytic enzymes what are the amylolytic or the star splitting enzymes what are the fat splitting enzyme or the lipase so all these are very very important points so that was all about our discussion of today's lecture we have discussed about the anatomy of human alimentary canal the histology of human alimentary canal and the various associated glands
so this brings us to the end of today's lecture but before we end make sure that you join the website you can visit the website of neet shala which is www.neetshala.com इस वेबसाइट में जाकर या प्ले स्टोर से नीचशाला की ऐप डाउनलोड कर सकते हैं एंड इन नीचशाला यू गेट ऑल दीज अपॉर्चुनिटीज टू गेट वीकली टारगेट प्लान कोचिंग प्लस यू कैन आल्सो गेट वीकली टारगेट प्लान दैट इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर गेटिंग अ गुड स्कोर इन नीट एग्जामिनेशन एंड आल्सो डेली मोटिवेशन एंड आल्सो देयर इज पीयर डिस्कशंस एंड सो ऑन you will get notes for every chapter handwritten notes in pdf form and also you can set your neat goal and you can target on the basis of that goal you also have certain test series which are certain tests are free and certain are paid as well so you can check those in the website and there is a question bank which is completely free of cost which consists of nearly 26000 questions which are either in the form of mcq or in the form of flash cards to make your study much more easier and you also have certain advanced flash cards to make your study much more easier you can also add your own notes to each and every question and in addition to this neetshala also have audio chapters for biology which helps reading of ncert much more easy you can switch on from audio to video with underlining text to make your study much more comfortable so all these important properties are there in www.neetshala.com so please make sure that you visit this particular website or download the app from the play store and regarding the various packages you can select your plan according to your wish if you are a student preparing for neet 2022 you have a package that is for rupees 2999 till your examination and if you are in 2021 batch then you have three different courses available one is for 999 that is a short term course and if you are joining for long term course then it is for 1999 jahan pe aapko bahut sare test series hai customized test series hai jo aapko aapke weak areas par depended hai so that is very very important aapki jo weak areas hai usko strong banane ke liye wahi topics se क्वेश्चंस सिलेक्टेड हो जाते हैं वो वही चैप्टर्स है वही टॉपिक्स है मोर क्वेश्चंस आपको मिलते हैं दैट इज नॉन एज कस्टमाइज्ड टेस्ट तो वो कस्टमाइज्ड टेस्ट भी आपको मिल सकते हैं इन योर प्लान सो मेक श्योर दैट यू लाइक दिस वीडियो एंड शेयर दिस लेक्चर विद योर फ्रेंड्स एंड डू फॉर गेट टू सब्सक्राइब टू नीट शाला यूट्यूब चैनल वी विल बी कमिंग सून विद द नेक्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ दिस चैप्टर दैट इज डाइजेशन एंड एब्सॉर्बन पार्ट टू इन द अपकमिंग लेक्चर सो सी यू सोन Goodbye and happy learning